This tutorial will provide an overview of how to register yourself online using your Student Academic Services channel. Our first step will be to log in to Connections. Once we've logged into Connections, you'll want to click on the gray tab at the top that says Student. Under the Student tab, you'll see Student Academic Services. You'll want to click here to access your Student Services information. At this point, you may be asked to re-enter your username and password. Once we've logged in to Student Academic Services, we'll see a menu on the left-hand side. Our first step will be to determine what courses we need to register for for the upcoming session. To do this, we're going to look at our degree audit. We'll click Degree Audit from the left-hand menu, which will allow our degree audit with our requirements to load. So scrolling down, we see that this student is pursuing an MBA program. Our core courses are listed first, and those blank spots indicate a place where a course is still needed or is still required. And then we can see that this student has completed Management 5590, and the course and grade appear in the degree audit. Scrolling down, we can see that six hours of electives were required, and the student has completed their electives requirement. And then at the bottom, we can see prerequisite courses. These prerequisite courses should be addressed ideally at the beginning of the program. So if you're a student who has prerequisite course waivers as indicated by your advisor, but you do not see those waivers indicated on your audit, you'll want to follow up with your advisor directly. You're going to use this degree audit in conjunction with your degree plan provided by your advisor to process your registration. So we're going to take a look at the degree plan. So we see the degree plan for the same student indicates the prerequisite course waivers are pending. So the student probably wants to follow up with their academic advisor regarding their prerequisite waivers. When we look at the degree plan, we can see the course sequence has been provided for the student. So for example, Business 5760 is slated to be completed fall two of 2012. It's important to keep in mind that while the degree audit will show us the courses that we need, it's the degree plan provided by the advisor that will show us the optimal course sequence. So for the MBA, we prefer for students to complete that quantitative block first, so this advisor has sequenced this degree plan for that student to complete those courses in a specific order. So this will tell us that we're registering for Applied Business Statistics for Fall 2 of 2012. Returning to the degree audit, We'll scroll up, and we can see that the student has not yet completed Applied Business Statistics. So our next step will be to process that registration. To process the registration, we'll click Registration from the menu on the left. If you receive this error message, registration is not open at this time for this section, it's likely that you need to set your current option settings to the registration term. To do this, we're going to click the gray Set Options box below. We want to register for Fall 2012, so we're going to update our current option settings to the Graduate Program Fall 2012 session. Once updated for the appropriate term, we see that registration is now currently open. Our first step is going to be to select our payment option. Students pay for their classes in a variety of ways, and you want to make sure that you select your payment option based on the way you want your billing to take place. So for example, many students use employer reimbursement to pay for their courses, but may have a portion that's not covered by their employer, and for that they'll use financial aid. So because the student wants the employer billed first and the financial aid billed second, they'll include employer reimbursement as payment option one and financial aid as payment option two. Moving on, we now enter in the course number for the course that we wish to register for. So here we'll type in BUSN, the prefix for our statistics course, and hit the question box next to the course number section. This will pull a listing of all BUSN courses available at Webster University. We will see Business 5760, Applied Business Statistics, appear in this list. We'll click the circle next to it and hit select at the top of the column. Now that we've selected the course, we need to select a section, so we'll click the question mark next to the section box. This will then populate the schedule for Business 5760 and all available sections throughout the Webster University network. All locations, including online, are available 
in this population. So we see that the section number ties to a variety of information. It'll include a link to the bookstore for the textbook. It'll indicate which instructor the course is with. It'll indicate the registration and the limit. It'll indicate whether or not the course is full. So if the course is full, it will indicate closed. If there are seats available, it will indicate open. It will indicate the number of hours the course is for, along with the campus that the course is offered at, the building location, the room location, as well as the dates the course is offered. So if we're trying to distinguish between term one and term two, we can use these course dates to determine when a particular class is offered. If the class is offered on campus, the day and time are also tied to that section number. So we're going to scroll down and take a look at the online sections. A general rule for online sections is to look at the letter that the sections tie to. So typically for School of Business courses, the letter O at the beginning of a section indicates an online course the first term. The letter Q at the beginning of a section indicates an online course the second term. So here we see the online course is listed, and we're going to go ahead and select section Q, F as in Frank. We'll scroll to the top and hit select. So we've now um, chosen our course and our section, and we have to add this course to our schedule. To do this, we'll click the add box at the right. We'll then see a message appear at the blue bar at the top of the schedule. The course Business 5760 has been added. We also see the course appear in the listing of courses below. We can verify that that course has indeed been added to our schedule by clicking on Student Schedule at the left-hand side. And as you can see here, Business 5760 Applied Business Statistics has been added to our schedule for Fall 2. So now we'll go back to Registration. So we're going to go ahead and add another course to our schedule for the next available session. We'll add Organizational Behavior Management 5590. So we're going to add Management 5590, Section 10, and we'll click the Add button to the right. We see that the Management 5590 course has been added to our schedule, but we also see a message appear in the blue bar above. You have repeated this course previously, and the course Management 5590 has been added to your schedule. That means that we've already taken Management 5590 previously in our degree. So we don't want to repeat that course or take the same class twice. It's important to note that these warnings are the only warnings that will appear whenever you make these types of additions to your schedule. So if you have a question, about whether or not you've previously taken a course or a question about whether or not a course can be repeated, it'll be important to check with your advisor. So to remove that course from our schedule so we do not repeat it, we're going to click the circle next to Management 5590 and hit the Drop Withdraw button at the top of the column. So to verify that the course has been removed, we can see a message in that blue bar, the course MNGT 5590 has been dropped. We also see that that course has disappeared from the course listing below. We can additionally verify this by checking our student schedule on the left. And we see that Management 5590 does not appear as part of our schedule, so that course has been dropped from our student record. If you encounter any additional challenges with your registration and you receive a message indicating that you have to see your advisor prior to registration or that you do not meet the prerequisites for a particular course, please feel free to contact your academic advisor or the Academic Advising Center in St. Louis or your particular host campus for additional assistance.